the latest After Effects beta update is ridiculous. We're talking about a fresh new design, new animation presets, and some brand new features coming to the 3D workflow that we've been asking for. If you're ready, let's jump on in. Before we start, be sure to download the beta After Effects app from your Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app. All of these new features will be coming to the beta app eventually, but remember to always keep the main After Effects app installed on your computer so you have a stable version you can rely on in case some iffy stuff starts happening with the beta. So here you can see we have a slightly different look, a bit more modernized, if you will. And if you watched my latest update video on Premiere Pro, you will also see a similar look. So here, if we go up to preferences and go to appearance, you can change the color theme and even turn on contrast mode to make everything a little bit easier to see. And good news for Windows users, there's a big performance boost on hardware acceleration, which is great news for 3D workflows, which are more demanding on your computer. In the past couple of years, After Effects has become a great starting place for people that are new to 3D. And in this latest update, it's become even better. So let's create a new comp here from scratch and we're going to learn about the new features along the way. And by the way, if you become a patron, you can download all of these demo project files for free. You'll find a link below. So right now I have this stock footage clip of an empty room from Envato and it's ready for us to decorate in 3D space. So before we can do anything with this room here, we first need to do a camera track. And once done, let's find three tracking markers here that are a good representation of the ground floor. Once we have that, we can right click, set ground plane and origin to let After Effects know that this is in fact a floor. Right click again, and this time let's choose create shadow catcher camera and light. So this shadow catcher layer is exactly what we were asking for with this update. But more on that, once we have something in our scene that can actually cast shadows, if we move our attention to the properties tab on the right here, it will show frequently used controls from any selected layer. With the new update, we can now use this panel to quickly adjust camera and light settings. So if I select my light layer, I can go to the properties panel and change the light to environment light. This is currently the only light that can cast shadow inside of After Effects with the new advanced 3D renderer. We could also link any HDR image to an environmental light to create a more realistic environment. And I won't be doing that in this video, but we did make a video going in depth on how to do this, which you can watch after this one. So now it's time to add some 3D objects to this room. I already have this GLB file. It's a 3D Rhino. And let's drag and drop it into our timeline here. To make sure the model is in the right place, I can go to Shadow Catcher, which is supposed to be where our floor is, and copy its position properties and paste it on our 3D model. Then we can use the on-screen handles here to move and rotate the model around. And now we have a rhino in this room. Let's call him George. And with this new update, After Effects can work with animations that are embedded in the model. And luckily, our little Georgie here has some animations built into it. To access these, you can expand the layer here and go down to Animation Options and pick one from this drop-down menu. Now what's really cool here is I can shorten or extend the model layer and the animation will be retimed to fit the new length. How cool is that? This means that After Effects is able to read the animation information and essentially create new in-between keyframes to keep the animation smooth. So cute, little Georgie. I can also enable time remapping to adjust the timing of the animation even further, just like any video file. So right now, our biggest problem with George is that he looks like he's just floating in space. Let's fix that with some shadows. If you saw our last video on the 3D workspace, one of our biggest issues was the fact that when we created a 3D plane to use the floor to cast shadows on, there was no way to turn off the visibility of the plane to only show the shadows. Well, Adobe listened. If we go to our shadow catcher layer, this is basically a simple 3D solid layer. But if we dive into its properties, you can see that except shadows is set to only now. This wasn't possible in the last update. So if we change it to off, we'll see what the solid actually looks like. Let's bump up the size and move it until it fills up the floor space. 
On the environmental light layer, let's turn on cast shadows. If you don't see any shadows, go into render options and hit fit to scene. After Effects will then resize the shadow casting box to our scene. In this window, we can also bump up the shadow quality. Now this might make our playback a little laggy. If that's the case, I can turn on Draft 3D to get a lower quality render of our scene in exchange for a smoother playback, which works great for me, but we can leave it off for now. Let's also adjust the intensity of our light and also rotate it so the shadow's direction makes sense for this room. On the shadow catcher layer, we also have the option to change the shadow color. So I'm going to pick from a real shadow in the footage so that way it'll match better. Before we continue to decorate little Georgie's room here, let's take a break from the 3D stuff and let's talk about something that also is new, but a little bit more simple and fun. And that is the new animation presets inside of After Effects. Now, if you've never used any of the animation presets inside of After Effects, this is a great time to get started because there's more of them to work from. So if you go to Effects and Presets tab, you'll see the Animation Presets folder on the top. And when we expand it, we get tons of presets ready for us to drag and drop to any layer. Some of the new ones include background presets like these anime speed lines, new transition presets like Inky Dissolve or Pixelated Dissolve. So I can create a solid layer here and drag in one of these background presets and bam, all the effects used show up in the effect controls ready to be adjusted. We also have presets for text layers to get some quick text animation going like these 3D text presets. Or how about these timers? What's super cool is I can apply any of these presets to a text layer and I could also turn it into a 3D layer to add some depth and use it in my 3D scene. There are plenty of presets to check out so I encourage you to go explore what's new inside of this folder. But if you're looking for even more animation templates, look no further than our sponsor today, Envato. So here on Envato, I can browse by video templates and here I can pick the software that I use and then you can find tons of easy to customize templates for me to download as many as I need for the project I'm working on. You can also sort by new to see what latest templates have been added to the library. They have templates for pretty much anything you can think of. Title animations, logo reveals, advanced transitions, even social media templates, and more. But the real reason why I'm here on Envato is to find some more things to add to George's room, because Envato has way more than just video templates. You can find illustrations, photos, stock footage, fonts, and more. In fact, there are over 19 million creative assets on Envato growing each day, and all of them come with a lifetime commercial license. For example, let's download this wooden frame and this picture of George's mom. Let's download it. And then we can combine them inside of Photoshop and add it to my 3D scene. So as you can see, Envato is super useful for me and my team to find creative assets to use in our video because we have everything in one place. If this sounds useful to you, you can use my link below to try it out. And it's one simple subscription with unlimited downloads. Thanks so much to Envato for sponsoring this segment of the video. And now let's start adding more to our 3D scene. So a few years ago, Adobe bought Substance 3D, which is essentially a software that lets you paint and add materials to your 3D models. And ever since then, you will now see in the Adobe Creative Cloud app that you will see an entire 3D suite all based in Substance that all do different things related to 3D. And with this update, the Substance Painter to After Effects workflow has become even more smooth. Now I know this is getting deep into the 3D world, but I really wanted to show you and give you a glimpse of how easy it is to work with Substance and After Effects so you can start to take advantage of how much power is inside of Substance. So here I'm on the Adobe Substance 3D Assets website. And this is where I can find plenty of 3D models and materials to use. And lots of them are free. Right now I'm looking for a piece of furniture for George's room. And this one here seems pretty nice. So once downloaded, I'm going to get an FBX file. Now let's open up Substance 3D Painter and drop in our table. Hit OK. And here we are. And on this main preview window here, we can hold Option on a Mac or Alt if you're on a PC and use a mouse to move around in 3D space, just like in After Effects. On the left side here, we have all the available materials. And I think George's table should be made out of wood. 
So let's drag and drop this wood material on our table. And voila, I can right click anywhere in the preview window to get quick access to our properties. Here's where I can change things like bumping up the tiling to make our texture smaller or changing its roughness. Now we still need to add material to the drawer handle here. How about this one? If I don't like this, I can go to the layers tab on the right and delete any material before dropping in a new one. I think I'm happy with this, so for now, all we need to do is go up to File and click on Send to After Effects. And Substance will bring our model and materials right into After Effects. But we're not done with Substance yet. I also have a model of a trumpet that needs material. So let's drag it in here and add a golden metallic material to all the parts of the trumpet. And maybe we can lower the roughness to make it a little bit more shiny. And now to make it even more interesting, I can drag in this metal rust material and that will be placed on top of the gold as you can see on the layer tab. What I can do now is right click on this rust layer and add a black mask. This is pretty much like layer masking inside of Photoshop. Now our mouse will turn into a brush tool with settings on top. And I can now paint in white on any spot where I want the rust to be visible. You can change the color of the brush right down here. Now, I think this looks rusty enough, so let's send it over to After Effects. Here in After Effects, I'll drop in the table and trumpet and find a good place to put them in the room. Right here should be good. George seems happy. And if you want more videos on the Substance 3D software, drop a Rhino below so we can take George on more 3D adventures together. Another neat feature in this new After Effects update is the ability to extract depth information from our 3D scene to use it to create fog or blur. Let me show you how it works. So once I'm happy with everything in my scene, I'll select all the layers and pre-comp them. Let's hit Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac to duplicate our pre-comp. Now this top layer here is where we'll get our depth info from. To do that, let's apply the 3D channel extract effect to the pre-comp. As you can see, our layer turns into black and white. And if I adjust the black and white point parameters, we'll start to see how it's revealing the depth of our scene. In the 3D world, we call this Z-depth. And with this information, we can apply effects only to the white and black areas, like the camera lens blur effect, for example. So let's add it to the bottom layer and hide the top layer. With the bottom layer selected, go to Effect Controls here, and under Blur Map, I can pick our top layer and choose Effects and Mask. So we'll actually use our Z-depth information. And now we should start to see some parts of our scene being blurred. I'm going to bump up our blur radius here to make it even more obvious. And remember, I can always go back to the top layer and adjust the black and white position in the 3D space to get the blur to show up in the areas that I want. We can also use the Z-depth on other effects like the fog 3D, but I don't think George wants a foggy room. But this would be perfect if you're creating kind of a spooky or dusty environment. So a lot of exciting new features coming to After Effects, especially in the 3D world. I still wish that we could use other light sources to cast shadows. So hopefully Adobe will figure out something soon and add in more features around the lighting. But for now, if you're already using After Effects, Learning how to do 3D is going to take your videos to the next level. Click this video right here to learn more about 3D Workspace inside of After Effects. And as always, keep creating better video with your gal. See you next time. Bye. Whoop.